Exactly. So this is really critically important. This is critically important, and most companies do a very poor job of this. They don't really understand how to go about it. We talk about this a lot, and you read lean literature, and they say, let's do Kaizen and get together with people and fix things, but they really don't tell anybody how to do it. And so there's a number of companies, and they have many different ways. Well, I have one here that has been tried, true, and proven. And so I want to kind of share that with you, you know, what the experience is with this. But before we get there, I'll probably I'll put this in. I want to show you a couple of videos. You've probably seen Undercover Boss, some of you. I want to you watch this and then think about it. Okay, I had to break this into little sections. So like we had a pretty big group today. I think most people are in town. We're about to go into our weekly senior leadership meeting. And I'm going to tell them I'm going to go into their operation undercover. It's going to be a big surprise. I'm sure everyone is wondering what is going on here. Well, um, what I'm going to be doing, I'm actually going to go out into the operations, <laughs> into the field, and I'm going to go undercover. Serious. This is going to give me the opportunity to really see what it's like to work at waste management. I'm sending out targets and cost-cutting goals from my office. I want to see if the targets are realistic on the ground. If I'm able to pull this off, I may be able to revolutionize some of our processes. It can make us more efficient. Okay, you can hit the next one. That's, that kind of set it up. So this guy, he's CEO of Waste Management. It's a huge company. He's going to go figure out what's wrong. And then this is the last little clip of that. Oops. I'm Larry O'Donnell, and for the last seven days, I've been undercover at Waste Management. And I met some great people when I was out there. But let's take a look. I call it the Battle Pillow. Get it, Randy. There you go. Good morning. How are you? How's it going? Good morning. How are you? What is your job title? Well, I have a couple of job titles, actually. You know, in my role, there's a lot of policies that I put out there, and you all have to live with them. I feel more of a connection with the folks that do the really hard jobs at this company. I'm going to be a different manager, because now I have a whole new appreciation of the impact that some of my decisions can have on you folks. That he's going to have a change of heart for us out there in the trenches. That really made a change in my life right there, just to hear that coming from the top. Tears came to my eyes. I was overwhelmed. I really was. Today was just amazing. And I really feel good about what we accomplished. This is an experience that I think is really going to change my life. Does anybody have a tissue? All right. Uh, <clears throat> anybody see what, any impressions on that? I'm, I'm just going to tell you up front, this is a terrible way to do continuous improvement. A anything wrong with what you saw there? Pardon me? You are brilliant. Yeah, it, 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 he randomly wanders up on five, six people, and they're loaded with problems. And he picks those three or four, five, six, seven data points, and he fixes them. And then everybody hugs and feels good about themselves. Well, what does it tell you about the other 100,000 people? I guess they're going to have to wait for the CEO to interview each one of them. Essentially, what's wrong is they really don't have a structure in place to tap into the people that do the work. And we talk about this in Lean, right? Process is king. Process drives improvement. You have to give authority to the process to drive improvement. It's got to be the people that do the work. They don't have that. So they have to wait for a CEO to come and talk to them because they don't have any kind of way to affect the system or improve things. They don't have the authority. So they live with their problems. And that just means the other 999,000 are dealing with theirs. In most companies, if you go to them and you talk about this, and I'm sure some of you have been out there in industry and talked to some people, this is typical. This is not a joke. 
you go out, to, especially in automotive, a lot of times you talk to automotive companies and, and you're talking about doing some things to improve. These people have their heads down and they have trouble looking up at you to even talk about changing something because they're so overwhelmed they can't keep up. They can't fix things. They don't have the time to do it. Yes. I was just going to say, uh, in, when I was working at the uh, University of Alabama Huntsville running the NEP Center up there, we were going out helping company do guys and, and teaching them lead. Uh, we had, I went to the, to the executive VP of the company and, and he told me at that time, we're too busy to, uh, to try to improve. If you want to do something, we do something over this other area, it doesn't really matter. And then six months later, they were they were uh, covered up in business. To, I mean, they were covered up in business too busy to, to improve. Six months later, go back, all the business is gone somewhere else because they couldn't get out the door, and they're closing their doors. So they, they couldn't, they didn't have any funds to go do anything with it. So if you look at it from the perspective of what that slide right there says, you're going to go out there. And, and I'm telling you, this is typical. This is typical. This isn't an unusual problem that needs right. to be resolved. Uh, so isn't it cool, Legos? 